Today we're going to make an attempt to replace the sway bar bushings on a 2002 Mazda 626. On this particular application we're going to apply this procedure on the V6 engine. I'm not quite sure if the chassis is the same as the Ford Probe or the MX-6. However, by far this is what we're going to do today. It is not the most comfortable job to do. It requires a lot of patience. Simple tools though. And to jack up the car high so you have a leverage to actually break those uh, bolts loose. Alright, this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with two of those on each clamp to hold the bushing itself. On this particular application here, on this angle, the way I proceeded to remove the first bolt, which is the one that I showed you, is, as you can see, there's a separation here. Let me see if I can get a better look at it. There's a separation there, as you can see. That's from the bolt that I took off first. And the other bolt, actually, it is not as easy as you would think to remove. I'm going to take you along to show you. Wear, please wear safety goggles. Safety goggles here will actually protect from all the junk that will fall down to your face when you're attempting to do this job. Jack the car. Put the wheel there, wheel there for extra protection. Jack. Well, the towers and this. there's the actual jack. And let's take you along through the what I consider the most uncomfortable job on earth when it comes to sway bar bushings. There's the actual sway bar. There's actual bushing right there. And the bolt. It's right there. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. I already started to take it off, but as you can see, that bushing is shot. How am I going to take that out, or how have I been taking it out? The bolt does not un come off that easily. I use a 14 millimeter open wrench and close end box wrench, and it only moves so much at a time. I'm actually waiting for it to actually get uh, loose enough for me to actually take it out all the way, the rest of the way by hand. However, I have not reached that moment yet. When I take the clamp out, I will show you how it looks. Clean that area up from any debris that it may have and install a new one. So, let's take it along. Here is the bracket and this, the bushing itself. The bracket was not easy to take out. So far, this is the, the worst job I've ever had to do and perform to exchange these bushings for the sway bar. Uh, the sway bar bushing that I had before came in pieces. And that's the side that I was hearing the most knocking. I do have to admit that I ripped off the rest of it but it came out in pieces not too much effort in taking that out so apply a, a bit of silicone grease in here silicone will not eat the rubber however it will help you slide this bushing into the bar until this bracket can meet its new home and again 14 millimeter bolts top one from the wheel well whichever one it is came out easy so much easier compared to this one you would think that the last bolt this one will allow this to slide up but 
I wasn't so lucky. So it was a very tight fit, very uncomfortable. If anyone has to do this and they want to pay a shop to do it, I don't blame you. This, however, can be done with regular tools. It does require a lot of patience, lots of it. The more the better. If you're a smoker, have a smoke. If you're a drinker, have a have a drink. If you don't do either one of those, take a walk around the block and, and cool off. This is not an easy job to do. I decided to take you along to see how is it that I place the, the wrench here so I could show you. And that's basically how I have it. I take a little bit at a time and you can wedge it right through there. If you have also silicone spray, you may spray it down. That's a uh, rubber bushing for the exhaust and the frame that actually bolts to the control arm. You may take that off and you may actually have a full swing. Mine is frozen in there. So I'm afraid that if I actually take it off, I may rip it. I don't want to wedge it. So I'm just going to take my time and take it out. But basically that's the angle and the position that I have the box end in. I'm going to proceed to do the other side eventually. If the other side is the same, I will leave this video the same. If the other side happens to be different, I will actually make a video of it. It should be uh, the opposite of what I'm doing here, the other side. However, I will be taking you along with it and showing you what I have. A few tips for you guys if you want to ever perform this job. Uh, you don't have to remove the outer tie rod. You guys notice the difference between the previous clip and this one. Uh, this tie rod was shot. It was just leaking grease all over it. The rubber was cracked and it was leaking all over it. I had a replacement one because I knew this was going to happen. And I just swapped it out. I could not align it very well with the sway bar on the control arm. So what I did, what you should do is take the sway bar link off the control bar, uh, the control arm. My apologies. And then you have this freedom to move it around. It's a little stiff on me because I started to run the bolt at the bottom, the one that slides, runs through, and then the cap slides in. I aligned it, I aligned the cap, it makes a whole of a lot of difference if you lubricate the, the bushing itself with grease, so it just glides through the bar. Once you align it, align the bolts, run them down, and then once you tighten them all, then you can, of course, play with the alignment of that one, run them down, and off you go. That is just my tip to it. Personally, I do not. I, I didn't like it. I do not like this job. It's painful, very uncomfortable. And if you do not own a, a lift to lift the vehicle high enough, you're going to have problems. So, this is where we are at so far. The link is off. and I aligned it. I was able to soak the rubber with silicone grease and it slid right off. And the advantage of that is, let me see if I can get my arm under here to hold the camera, is that the rubber was bothering me enough. You definitely need one of these. For the bottom one, uh, and as you can see, 
I have complete freedom to move it. Yes, I have to take it out and repeat the process. Now, some of you may ask, how come I do not use a ratcheting ra uh, box wrench? It just does not fit. The round edge is so thick that it does not fit. This tool, however, you will need it for the top one. It works quite well and trust me, you save a lot of time. First of all, I want to apologize for not uh, following up on the other side of the sway bar bushing. My phone died completely when I was going to shoot the following video. And I just realized that my phone just had 1% and I was just not going to make it. My apologies for that. Uh, this is just uh, an additional clip to follow up on the other side. And it comes, it comes to find out that when I went to the other side of the sway bar bushing, it actually was way easier than the passenger side. Uh, I just found it easier. And basically what I did was ultimately taking the whole sway bar out of the control arms and that thing went in like nobody's business. Uh, you do have to torque it down. I strongly uh, recommended it. For those that are actually tuning in later into this uh, series of videos, the reason why I actually went ahead and replaced the the sway bar bushings is because I was trying to pursue a a clunking noise, especially on the driver's side. And I basically started replacing everything in terms of suspension components because again there was the old factory. And Everything else was replaced, nothing else was left to be done except for the sway bar bushings because it was so uncomfortable to do and I finally got to do it. And it kind of sounded like a, a ball joint uh, sound. And basically when I actually took the car out for a test drive, I heard less of the clunking, but it was still there. I definitely did not get any vibrations though. So for anyone who that, that are you know they are just experiencing vibrations and you guys took care of the tire issue, you guys just completely just ensure that it's not a tire issue. Everything is fine, the rim is not bent, uh, everything is inspect out your sway bars. Uh, for some reason my car I just replaced the sway bars and I just received zero vibrations, nothing. And I was still getting the clunking sound and I'm going to show you exactly where I was getting the clunking sounds from, uh, from this book. This is the area where I paid extra attention in my clunking sound. Now, I had uh, paid a shop to actually replace the ball joint of my car. It comes about that on this application, the ball joints cannot be replaced. Actually, it comes together with the control arm. So I had no choice but to uh, go to AutoZone. And the reason why I went to AutoZone is because of the lifetime warranty on the control arm. No big deal. Mazda actually, I, I would say go with the Mazda replacement, uh, that hands down. And when I looked at the control arm, it wasn't really that bad. I mean, the joints were shot, but this my car came out of the assembly line in 2001. It's a 2002 vehicle. Last year they made them. It will, if I was able to get them, I replaced that at in 2010. The car had a little over that 100,000 miles, and the the joints were not that bad. They were shot, but I've seen way worse. So go with the Mazda quality. However, if you have an artisan that is near and they have your part in stock, they do offer a lifetime warranty on it. Uh, going back to this, I just 
started looking at every single possible thing that could move on my suspension. I know the struts were fine, uh, the coils were not broken, uh, those were properly torqued. And this is the area that I just started to reinforce the bolts. And it comes about that with a 3 8 ratchet, I was actually able to rotate those bolts without too much force. So I decided to torque where you see the arrows, those uh, bolts, I torqued them down to specs. And this bolt right here, this big nut right here, the pivot, that's where I, I I apply the torque settings for this application. For those that are interested, control R on to steering knuckle, ball joint nut, 25 to 42 foot pounds. All right, for the inner pivot bolts, for the front ones, 58 to 78. Trust me, mines were nowhere close 20. So I torqued them down and all I hear is just the engine and the road. Uh, the car is not the quietest car out there. For some reason, I believe Mazda should have just recommended different type of tires. I actually did get a brand new set of Nexon tires. I love the tires. I actually use the same type of size, everything. From the factory and I barely did not hear any improvement on the road noise it's just again the type of ride but again I can't stress those tires uh, but basically I took care of the settings torque settings 58 to 78 I actually did 78 and the clunking sound just went away Here's the component here. This is again from the Haynes manual. Number three, that's where you have your ball joint. Number two, that's where the sway bar and link attaches to. You have a bolt here, uh, a nut on the other side. This again, however, you have three bolts, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, three. Torque them down as well. I believe it's at 50 something to 78 foot pounds. I can't stress that enough. You can do it. And trust me, it will be quiet. No clunking sound. Make sure the other side is also torque. I only applied it to one side because that was the side that I was working on. One. Second, that was the only control arm that was replaced. And so it was more than likely to suspect that side. So that's what I did. Other than that, not really much going on here for the suspension for this car. Uh, not too much rubber applied on the suspension like other cars with double wishbones and etc. Uh, this one again is just simple, very simple. Uh, I love the suspension on this car. Uh, if it can be better, absolutely, yes it can. But this car, again, good suspension. Uh, let me see if I can find. A good shot of the struts already assembled and I just can't find it so my apologies so back to the clunking sounds and the sway bar bushing replacements that's all there is to it I'm gonna wrap it up here guys any questions feel free to just write them down uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in the type of projects that I'm going to be getting myself involved when time and health permits. I am going of course to be doing my my projects as well as car repairs that come in to my doors and if you guys want to be updated on a specific car that I'm working on and you guys want to ask feel free to subscribe. If you guys also want to ask questions I also uh, speak Spanish as well. So make sure that uh, you can ask. I'll do my best to do the videos, both English and Spanish. I'll do my best, uh, depending on the time and, and the type of rush that I'm into, you know, 
finish the job now that I'm actually rushing into the the project I just I would like to be efficient well subscribe to my channel thanks for watching enjoy